Hey y'all, this is AL Think Madame and Cinnamon Sugar. <laughs> and uh, this is the recap review for Tyler Perry's Sisters. I know y'all haven't seen me in a while, y'all have been going through. It's, it's, when I tell y'all it was so random, I was just like, wow. I wasn't sick, per se. Um, I did not have anything that was contagious, nothing like that was going on. It was the most absolute random stuff that was popping off but just know that i was in excruciating pain and it got to a point where i was like okay now this is random but um later on today i will give y'all a life update so to speak where i'm doing the merry man side Hell for saga and a what a week a uh, little segment for y'all to better understand exactly what was going on so now that I've gotten that out of the way, y'all see the shirt. The shirt says, um, it's the black excellence for me. Um, because I know somebody's gonna be like, what the shirt hidden for? That's what it's hidden for. Okay, all right. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. So the episode started where it left off, where Zach was trying to figure out why all these, you know, officers and whatnot are at his place. And, you know, they didn't hem this man up. Talking about some, uh, yeah. Can we search you? Do you have any weapons on you? He said no. And so she was like, all right, I'm about to search you right now. So she gave him a thorough pat down and did the absolute most. And he trying to figure out what's going on. And they was just like, no, we're not going to tell you why you're being arrested. Just know you're being arrested. And so old boy that was there was like, I mean, where are you taking him? He said, what prison are you taking him to? And I'm looking like, do you know something that we don't know? Because this seems like it's going to be a jail situation if he gets booked somewhere because nobody said, we're taking you to prison, buddy. So I was like, what are you talking about prison for? But they said, we take him to Fulton County. And I've heard everything Fulton County is just not what it need to be. It ain't giving what it's supposed to give. If you're going to get locked up anywhere, don't get locked up and have to go there. I just heard so many horror stories about that particular county. Um, and it is what it is. So anyway, while he was being taken out the door, he asked old boy if he could call Fatima. And so he was like, I mean, yeah, but and he was like, man, just make sure you call Fatima. Cause you know, Fatima gonna say the wolf, <laughs> you know, she gonna say the wolf cause she needs to know what her man is going down. Why is her man going down and what is he going down for? So yeah. So Fatima at this point don't know what's going on. And so she's at work. She at work and she walks into the office and she's talking to Andy. And so Andy was like, girl, let me tell you about last night. So she went, closed the door and she was like, well, man, sit down. She was like, girl, yeah. So she was like, I love my penthouse. And I was just like, oh gosh, I'm just so sick and tired of this heifer. Ooh, child, it's so sad that you can be bought. It's so sad that you can be bought. And it's not like she ain't got no money, but it's like, I will understand if the circumstances were different. If it wasn't Gary or any man who was anything like Gary, then I would be here for it. Because even though she has her own money, she has a, the, the money that she makes from what I can gather from the way that they talk about her on here, she's somewhat of like a high powered lawyer. So she makes decent money. But anyway, Fatima, you know, was like, oh, okay, but, uh, you know, what, what, what is we doing? Because one minute you're trying to make it seem like you need all of this help and, you know, assistance with, oh, I need all of my furniture and stuff back in my old apartment because I'm not going to be there, but I'm just going to spend the night, y'all. But I'm, I'm returning the car. I'm selling the car. I'm doing this because he's not going to take it back, whatever, whatever. But in the same breath, you so excited about this place. And we just like, girl, please go somewhere and get some help. Please stop. Just please stop stop it all. Because one minute you act like you finna be done and you're not gonna accept all this stuff. And the next minute, here you go. Look at pitiful. Like, I can't. So, you know, she and Fatima are talking, and Fatima is just like, Heffa, I mean, I'm gonna need for you to understand what's going on. But before they really got to that part, um, she was like, you know, she lives for her man. Like, I understand you live for Gary. I, I don't know what for. You know, she she said it, you know, on the inside. But uh, <laughs> she was like, I live for my man. And, you know what I'm saying? And despite everything that's going on, um, I'm going to ride for my man. But we're going to figure out who the baby daddy is. And so Andy trying to take her for this half of like, well, it is Zach's baby. Ma'am, you were not there. You were not there. You do not know when the baby was conceived. 
And <laughs> I hope it's Aaron's. I hope it's Aaron's because I'm so sick of her because it's like, girl, it's like, why do you want the baby to be his so bad? Is it something residual left over from when you were in a relationship with him and maybe y'all were going to try to have a baby? Like, what is it? I understand y'all have history. Maybe that's just what it is, but I'm not here for it. Like, she's just dead set against believing that there's a possibility that the baby is the person who she more than likely is pregnant by. And I'm just like, ma'am, like, I don't understand why you, like, she has completely ruled that out. It's like, girl, please stop. Stop the cap. Stop all of it. Anyway, so Sabrina and Maurice then went on the inside of the bank and Sabrina is is tied. She is over it because it's like, sir, we've already gone through this. Uh, he done, he done robbed the bank. He done held us at gunpoint. He done did the most. He had a whole situation planned out and he done rolled up on you at your place where you should feel safe in your own home and has stolen from you. And he done held a gun on you a, a, a multiple times. But you sitting up here, over here, entertaining the conversation. There's no, there is no conversation to even entertain. So I don't even understand why he didn't say, all oh, off rip, 911, don't nobody have time. Because he doing the most. So anyway, Sabrina is tied in her spirit. And it's like, he over here trying to defend you. He was like, oh, well, he got out. He ended up, you know, giving up the ring and all this other stuff. Okay, and. And that's how I would have been like, don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody care. And so she had to knock some sense into him with information, which is that uh, they were doing an investigation and they feel like you were in on the robbery. So I'm going to need for you to get your life together because not only was that the case, these people was about to fire you. You know, you need a job. You were about to lose your job. Get this work. And I'm just like, why you not understand it? So after he got that realization going on, she was like, please leave this man alone. Like, do not entertain it. Like, what is we talking about? So he going to try to like dismiss her and go and deal with one of the customers coming in. So then that man who is like undercover, whatever, at the airport trying to, you know, deal with these sex trafficking situations. He done rolled up on Danny and Danny is just like, Ooh, let me hide from him because I stood him up. And so she was like, look, I, I'm just giving you a dose of your own medicine. You was trying to set it off. And I told you I needed my own space or whatever. Like, leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So ultimately he tried to read her and was like, okay, so, so who did it? Who, who do I have to owe? Who, 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 who do I have to thank for this situation that's going on with you? So she trying to figure out what he talking about. And he talking about you acting this type of way. Like some man must have put you through something for you to just be like this. So standoffish and not want to have nothing to do with nobody. And so she was like, I could just not want to date. Like, which is true. But I mean, it is what it is. People can say, I don't want nothing to do with you, whether they are dealing with a situation or not. That's her choice. But I mean, yeah, we all know Andy going through and she going through stuff with rodeo child because i'm but every single time i think about that man i visualize his face so i mean it, it's a situation pop off he hears something over the loudspeaker and it prompts him to be like oh oh i gotta go and so she's like oh, okay so at the same time her phone begins to ring and it's andy wanting to know whether or not you know she's gonna be available for them to have girl time and all this other stuff so being the way that their friendship has been, you know, discussed and the way that we've seen it play out, it's like they're friends, but they don't hang out one-on-one. -on -one. It's usually Andy and Karen. You know what I'm saying? It just always seems like the two of them have so much more uh, going on than Sabrina and Danny, and they're like the lesser of the friends, if you know what I mean. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So Danny kind of confused. like So she's like, oh, okay, so you want me to call the other girls? Because like usually when they get together, it's all of them, not no one-on-one -on -one time. So she's like, okay. So she was like, oh, no, 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 just you. I just want to meet up with you. And so she was like, okay, yeah, I get off in a little while. She was like, okay, well, can we meet at this place? And so she was like, sure. Like, she confused because, like I said, they don't be hanging out just one-on-one. -on -one. So, I mean, I'd be confused, too, because I'd be like, girl, what is this about? Now, she did think that the reason why she wanted to hang out with her one-on-one -on -one might be because she wanted to give up her apartment to her because she told her she'd think about it. But she didn't told her in this conversation, no, nah, girl, they ain't it. But she still was like, yeah, I'll meet up with you. So at the bank... Sabrina working, and that prince, that African prince or whatever he is, that rolled up on her. He in line and rolled up, 
And so he was like, I went to every branch of this bank so that I could try to find out where you work because I wanted to apologize to you and I wanted to ask you out on a date. So, you know, she was like, uh, I'm flattered, but I'm good. And so he was like, you are so beautiful. You look like the women back home. And so, you know, she looked like, <laughs> thank you. I mean, I am African-American. He was like, yeah, I understand, but, uh, you look good. Like he didn't went, <laughs> you know, went, wow. I was like, sir. So anyway, she was like, uh, I'm not sure about all that. I don't, I'm not sure about a date, none of that, whatever. And so he then says, you know, okay, well, I want to make a withdrawal. So she was like, okay, fill out this slip, whatever, whatever. And so he done filled it out for $200,000, I think, or something like that. And so she saw the amount and, you know, she saw the accounts and like, you can see the look on her face, like, wait a minute, it's a lot of money. And I'm like, I forgot whether or not she knew that he was a, a, a African prince or was that conversation had when they left the restaurant, well, when she was no longer in the restaurant and he was talking to his bodyguard friend or whatever that, whoever that man was to him. So yeah, uh, she was like, well, we don't have this much on hand. I can call like the bank downtown or something so that you can get that amount. He was like, no, 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 it's okay. This man talking about, oh, oh, I thought you was, I, I thought that, that it wasn't enough. I thought you were going to think that I was broke. She about to die like what? She about to choke like what? <laughs> $200,000? You thinking that trying to withdraw $200,000 means that you broke? Now, this is out of one of 12 accounts. I think he has 12 accounts total. 12. In that one account, he was trying to withdraw $200,000 out of it. Sir, Sir. So anyway, you know my Reese was around the corner and he overheard the conversation. It was like, turn that, turn that, turn that around so I can see how much money this man got in this account. And she was like, you know, I can't do that due to confidentiality. And he was like, help her, I work here. Turn it around. I am the confidentiality or whatever. I, the secrecy and all that stuff. So anyway, she done turned the thing around. He was like, yep, turn, turn, turn it back around, turn it back around. She was, he was just like, you better get with him. You better go out on a date. He just slid the number and everything. Because like after she saw the the uh, the uh figures and things, he slid the number to her or whatever. When he was about to leave, he was like, you know, hopefully we'll be able to link up with her. child, the way she, she put her hand on the card to retrieve it. I mean, I was like, oh, you seem a little eager to get that card all of a sudden. But, mm. and I mean, she's like me in the regard of we don't deal with dudes because they have money. We don't deal with dudes because if that were the case, I would have money. Like I would not be out here having to struggle, so to speak, because <laughs> I'm not really trying to speak that on myself. I'm just saying like, I don't have it like that where I can go to a bank and say, Ooh, let me, let me, let me pull out $200,000. Like I ain't got that, but I've had people who were wealthy to roll up who were genuinely interested. It wasn't no old Bust it wide open for me and I hand you this. Now, there have been people who've tried me in that regard, but I'm just saying there have been people who really have been genuine and who have wanted something serious with me. But I was like, nah. And they were like, oh, well, I could do this and I could do that. This one dude rolled up on me. I'll never forget it. This one dude, he was not from Alabama. He rolled up on me one day when I was in the gas station and he dropped his bank receipt on purpose while I was getting something for my mama out of the store which was really the only reason why I went up there and then proceeded to like show me the key fob to the car he had. And he was like, Oh wait, let me show you. I was just like, I'm not moved by stuff. Like, like he really tried to pursue me in that moment. This man said, I, he saw my car outside cause I was driving my car, the car that I had at the time. I had my, um, my student, um, um, thing on there from Alabama state university in the window. And I all I always had like Alabama State University stuff on my car, but if nothing else, you saw the decal. That's what I meant to say, the little sticker decal in my window. So he was like, "Oh, I know you in college, so I'll pay your tuition, I pay for your books, and I give you a weekly allowance of money. And all I want is companionship from you, sir. If you don't get like, I was just like, I really was turned all the way off. And this man was not ugly. That's another thing." The thing is, most of the people who really be rolling up, who I can tell are serious, they be fine. Body be error a thing. Don't think because I'm fat that, that people don't be wanting me who actually looks like somebody that's scrumptious. The people be scrumptious looking. But I just be like, I don't want what you offering. Like, I understand what you're saying that you want, but I don't want that. 
I'm not looking for nothing. I'm not going to change my mind all of a sudden because you have dangled a couple of dollars in my face or something like that. No, I'm good where I'm at. So, child, in that regard, Sabrina and I are, are alike. That's all I'm going to say. But, uh, yeah. But Maurice was like, uh, Heffa, you better do something because if you don't, I will. I'll go get the nicest wig. And he basically was going to make himself look very, 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 uh, convincing. <laughs> This fool talking about he was going to do some things. He was he was going to make sure he was going to get the money if she ain't trying to get it. I was like, sir, y'all don't understand how much I hollered. If you know, you know. If you saw the scene, you could tell what he was referring to. <coughs> <coughs> Throat baby. But anyway, yeah. So uh, Sabrina is at work and then Aaron rolled up as usual. And I just be like, woo, child, you, you be doing everything but working, don't you, sir? But anyway, he done rolled up. And, of course, he wants to know, you know, have you gone to the doctor? Do you know the timeline and all of this? Because in my heart of hearts, I feel like it's mine. And so she was like, I ain't been yet. Don't worry about that. I told you what I feel like it is in this moment. Like, it's Zach's baby. So he was like, well, okay, I understand. Okay. All right. And so, you know, she's still allowing him to call. And I'm just like, uh-uh. Like, sir, it ain't that deep to deal with Karen, of all people. Like, why put up with this? And I mean, yeah, she, she like, 0.2 seconds pregnant. And so, what sometimes comes along with that are emotions and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, Karen went outside. This man is in the truck crying. This man crying. He in his feelings. Child, whatever. I, 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 I can't. I can't do it. Anyway, do what you do. And he over here, in his heart of hearts, he's just feeling like, you know, part of me wishes that you would just tell me to leave you alone, that you want nothing to do with me so that I can move on with my life. And I'm saying to myself, you could have been moved on long before butt cheeks and thighs were spread. Because to me, she ain't never been all the way here for him like that. I feel like she was there for the fact that Oh, I'm not with my ex anymore and he ain't paying me no attention. So, I mean, I guess I allow this situation to pop off. And it's like, I'm going to forever feel like they shouldn't have never had no deals with one another because he did not have a divorce decree in hand. He had a whole wife, even though he went with the hell for no more. I don't care if the proceedings were underway. Y'all were not divorced. I said what I said. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> that situation should have never even popped off. And I ain't here for him. And I ain't never been here for him. And I don't never go. I don't feel like I'm ever be here for him. Like something significant is really going to have to pop off for me to be here for him. I ain't never going to be here for Aaron. I don't see it for him. I don't care. So anyway, um, yeah, he over here in his feelings and crying. Boy, bye. So anyway, um, Andy is in her office. And she done called Gary. And now she's trying to make it seem like, um, where are my things? And he over here like, oh, you really wanted me to, you know, put everything back? And so he, she was like, yeah. So he was like, well, um, I'll get them to put the stuff back in the apartment, but your clothes are still in the penthouse or whatever, whatever. And he over here talking about, can we at least do a walkthrough? We're grown, whatever, whatever. And my thing is like, if I'm telling you to leave me alone, respect that. Respect that. If I'm telling you I don't want you... Let me be, leave me alone. I don't, I don't like stuff like that. Like I, as I've gotten older, I've been very, so much more vocal about my intentions with people. I ain't trying to leave nobody on. That's why I would tell you with a heart, in a heartbeat, I am single and not looking for nothing. I bring absolutely nothing to a table. Since that's what y'all want to talk about nowadays, I ain't got no table. I ain't bringing nothing to a table. I have nothing to offer. Bye. Like, I really be telling these people, leave me alone. I don't want to chill. I already know what chill means for y'all. I don't want no parts. We don't need to exchange numbers. We're not going to be friends. Uh, because y'all don't know what the real definition of friendship is. Ain't nothing to talk about. But yeah, he doing the most. And, you know, he really is trying to see her and get back with her. And she was like, I don't understand why you want to link up because it's going to be the same conversation. What's going to happen that's different this time than what you said before. So earlier in the day, um, before her conversation with Fatima was over with, Fatima was like, I got some for you. So she went back to her office and got one of those balls that had, you know, that were created out of rubber bands. And so she was like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this? She said that, you know, 
this was something that she was told about, which was take off a rubber band for, you know, everything that I think it was something to the effect of everything that went wrong in the relationship until you can realize that you need to be done until you like, by the time you get down to the last rubber band, leave, you need to be done with it. Let it be over. Just like all the rubber bands over with. So anyway, <laughs> in the black garage, Fatima done rolled up on Hayden. And so Hayden is like really mad at her and she's still laughing at him. Fatima be killing me how she be laughing at him. She really be sending it off. And so she basically told him like, uh, like I said, leave me alone. I'm going to let all of this go. So he is like, he is very confused. Like, what, what do you mean? You going to let this go when I'm the one who was over here crippled. <laughs> Y'all, I'm sorry. Let me call down. I can't stand Hayden. But anyway, he really over here confused. Like, what you mean? You going to let this go? I'm the one over here who got beat up. So she was like, no, nah, I'm going to let this go because you hit me. And he was like, you hit me first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you're crazy. Like, if there was a camera in place to see all of what you've done, sir, if you, you that was the least, <laughs> that was the least of the words that you should have been having in that moment is getting hit. She did the bare minimum to you. Now, them men beat, <laughs> them men beat that man up terrible. I'm so here for it. But anyway, uh, yeah, she over here making fun of him, and then she made him hobble to his car very quickly to make her laugh some more. And she basically threatened him and don't make, it was like, don't make me have to set it off no more. Cause if I have to do this again, you're going to get killed. Like it, it's, it's going to happen for real this time. So and he over here is not believing nothing. What she said, I'm like, Fatima says exactly what she means. Fatima has always been very clear. Leave me alone. I'm not here for you. Don't make me have to set it off. You're trying me. You're trying my patience. I've already been nice to you. You ain't listening. You ain't gonna like what's gonna happen next. And then when stuff pop off, now you now you're mad. Now you're upset. Child, please tell me why. Like I already knew what's gonna happen. Cued and rolled up to Maurice's house. And Calvin is like, and hey, what are you doing here? What the hell is going on in the streets of my home? Is what's going on right here in his mind. So he immediately calls Maurice and he was like, uh, what is going on here? Why is this man in our house? And so he was like, what man? Told him it was cute. He was like, uh-uh, did nobody say him to come to my house? So he was like, uh-uh, no, 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 I didn't say nothing. So he ended up telling him, put him on speakerphone, well, put him on the phone. And so Q talking to him, he was like, hey, he was like, did nobody tell you to come to my house? Man, this fool really on the phone with him, trying to make it seem like it's okay for him to be there when nobody has authorized this. Because... Yeah, Calvin is like, didn't know, we didn't have no conversation. How dare you? So he was like, I didn't tell him he could stay here. So anyway, he told us, well, I told you I needed you. How are you going to bogart your way into somebody's house, sir? If you don't, see, this is what gets people shot. I tell people, with the, people be laughing at me when I say that. And I, I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'm just like my parents because I like the way that their uh, relationship is. Like my mama threatens my daddy all the time. And my daddy threatens my mama all the time, playfully. And so I would tell somebody with the quickness, don't make me have to cut you because I'm not being serious. But I'm just saying, like, in real life, stuff like this is what gets you shot. <laughs> like, you, you, you will get shot. Don't nobody have time for this. Like, you don't just bust up in nobody's house. And I already knew he was going to get in the house wherever he found the key or the pick lock that he done done. I already knew that's what it was going to be. So anyway, the day should be over with at Karen's shop and Andy rolled up in the Rolls Royce and so Pam being nosy and was like oh wait a minute so she was like hey it's Andy how you doing and you know peeping the car and all this other stuff so she wants to know where Karen is and she was like well she ain't here you know would you like for me to call her for you or something and so she was like no I'll you know find her I'll figure it out you know whatever so she is there and so they're talking and so, of course, Karen and her feelings, she was like, oh, what you doing going on a joyride? Y'all know she's been acting very Mr. Grinch, Scrooge, and all of that. And so, Andy was like, look, there's a guy who wants to put a and aid on that. And uh, since Gary won't take it back, I'm going to, you know, get somebody to buy it. And she's trying to make it seem like she's going to move back into this place. I will believe all of this when I see it. I will believe all of this when I see it. Um, cause as of right now, I'm not believing you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's some foolishness going on. I ain't here for it. 
But I'm going to need for Karen to get to that appointment because it's like, how you going to tell somebody I know it's yours when you was with two men at the same time? Girl, bye. So, yeah. Um, Karen is trying to read her because of how stupid Andy is. And it's like, part of me is here for it, but at the same time, I'm like, girl, you ain't got room to read nobody because look how stupid you're being in this moment by just making it so in your mind that somebody is the father of your baby. Girl, girl, by everybody's time, like everybody, and then she, she has the audacity to get mad that everybody want to know, okay, heifer, when you going to get the fraternity test? How you mad? Everybody want to know because you over here just like, matter of fact, oh, it's Zach's. No, heifer, get the test done. So anyway, <clears throat> we're at the end of the episode, child. And so they end up linking up with um, Zach and the guy who was at his house. He was like, okay, so did you call Fatima? Because, like, what's going on? He was like, man, um, about that. I was about to call her, and then this man came to me with some evidence, with this, with this inf information or whatever. This man had a folder. I don't know what was on the paperwork, but Zach was tired of his spirit. I can't wait till next week to see what it is because uh, it looks like something. Very, very damaging. I don't know if it's something that's bad enough for Fatima to be like, you know what's that? <laughs> At every turn, it's something popping off. Ain't nobody got time for it. I don't know. Anyway, y'all, that was the uh, episode. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Give this video a thumbs up and let's talk about it down in the comment section.